Well, good day, Max Sarah again. Welcome back to the shop. So this episode will concentrate on mainly the tapered sections of the R8 tooling and a couple of the parallel sections. And remember, we made we're going to use this R8 taper gauge that we made some time ago to make sure we nail our tapers absolutely spot on. Now, if we get time, hopefully we'll um, get into a bit of side wheeling for the flat surfaces and quick, maybe a quick discussion on some of the grinding wheels we've been using, how and why we've been using those wheels. So, anyway, we'll head over to the grinder. Okay, with the roughing wheel, we've completed the grinds on all of the small ends of the R8 arbors. Uh, these are we've ground to one thou above finish size, so we'll take that last thou off with the with the finer wheel. So what I've done now, what we're doing now, we're onto these tapers. So this is the first one I've ground, and this is the second one. So I've ground this one, had a check, and just done a very slight adjustment on the angle. So we've moved our compound uh, two thou. Well, we're at 2,000 the position where I've got the indicator set up anyway. So that's a, that's a very minute amount. So we'll recheck. I'll show you with the, all I've done is use the pencil line. Now this won't um, won't show up on the camera. It's got I've got I've, I've got to have it in the right light myself to see. Spin that around. And I can see here I'm only contacting on this very start of the taper. So that means we've got to give our compound a bit more angle, which we did for this one. So I'll repeat the process. Get that in the right light. If anything, we could possibly bump that compound just a fraction, just a hair more. Probably a thou on the dial indicator where I've got the indicator set. We'll try that. We'll try it with a bearing blue. Then you guys can see what I'm seeing. I just put a little bit on the inside of the ring. So just a slight, very light smear. And as you can see, we're getting coverage most of the way up over here. But, um, down over here, we're a bit light on it. So we'll just bump that compound around a fraction more just so we, we take a bit more off the bottom of the taper than the top of the taper. Well, I'm only talking about moving that compound a thou. Okay. So when I talk about moving the compound around a thou, that's all it is here. I've just got the um, dial indicator on our new indicator stand and the stylus pointed down on the end of the compound. So that means I've got to bump the compound this way till we get one thou movement on the, on the needle and then we'll have another trial grind. So 
So I'll get a Sharpie marker, we'll blue this area up and then we'll take a trial grime without coolant so we can see what's going on and we should be taking the material off this end of the taper before this end of the taper. <laughs> So I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's swing you around a bit. It's the beauty of doing it between senders. We can keep popping these in and out and it won't make any difference to how the thing runs. Okay, you can see here we've taken all the bearing, uh, the Sharpie marker off down this end of the taper and we still have it a light bit up the other end there. Hard to, hard to get that in a good light. That's the desired effect that we wanted. So I'll put this one in. And well, actually, I'll put another one in and do a fresh grind on another one. Okay, so we've blued up our ring again and we put our face malaba back in after that last adjustment. So we'll um, see how she's looking this time. But I think we're pretty confident we've got to be really close, so we'll pop her off. And that's exactly what we're after. So we have that blue tinge coverage the whole length of the taper. And we're pretty even on our ring gauge as well. So that's looking, um, wipe that off. Do it again with. The second time, you might not pick that on the camera. It's it's picking up that we've got it. We've absolutely nailed that spot on to our ring gauge, so that is exactly R8 specs. Now doing it a second time, where I just wiped it off, that's the best indicator as the thickness of the bearing blue isn't masking any any miscontact areas. So that is absolutely spot on. So we'll continue the rest. And like we mentioned before, when we have our finishing wheel on, we'll do the first one and we'll just double check this taper again. So all of my in-feed cuts while we're grinding the tapers are taking 
I'm taking the readings directly off this indicator here rather than the dial hairs. This is the position I'm standing in. I'm able to get a, a, a more accurate reading on the depth of cuts I'm taking. So I'm only going in half a thou is quite a large cut, so that's what I've been taking. And as opposed to when we were doing the parallel grinding, all of our cuts were taken on the compound, which is set at the R8 angle. So I can go several divisions on here before I'm coming in half a thou depth of cut. So that, that will vary depending on which angle your compound is. It's preferable to set this here so you know X amount of divisions on here will move the wheel in one thou or half a thou, whatever whatever you need at the time. It's the most accurate way to do it, but because we're yeah we have no option, all of our cuts are directly off the hand wheel here. It just gives us a bit better resolution what we're reading on the indicator here than what we can pick up on the hand wheel dial. So we'll crank it up and we'll carry on roughing. We also have a, a sock draped over the end of the coolant pipe so that just evenly spreads the coolant over the part. Um, otherwise it just flings out everywhere. So. Okay, this one's looking good. I can tell by the, the way I can hear the grinder loading up and also when I look at the sparks um, this, on, on a half a thou depth of cut I'm getting slightly less sparks than a freshly um, dressed wheel and the f surface finish has, has improved immensely. So that's telling me this wheel's starting to dull off. It's not releasing the particles, but we're getting through it. Um, I'll, I'll go through these, uh, these wheels, what I've found out um, in, in wheel selection um, towards the end of the video. So this one's done. So what I'm going to do now is I'll, I'll dress the wheel up and I'll put a, another one in. So I'll give the wheel a quick dress up. This will keep the wheel freely cutting and remove those dulled um, grip particles. It should be okay. Those last two two cuts were um, only an infeed of uh, one thousandth of an inch. So, okay, we'll get set back up with another arbor, and you'll see the difference in the sparks. Okay, you'll see the difference now.
So in those first initial cuts, you see, I don't know if it, I think hopefully it picked it up, but you'll see the sparks were, a, there was a lot more sparks. The wheel was, doing, was cutting a lot more efficiently. So this one's cleaned up. And with a freshly dressed wheel too, the surface finish has dropped off a bit too, but that's fine because we're still roughing. So we've roughed out all of our tapers now, so they're all complete. So we've swapped the wheel over to uh, the wheel that we're going to use to finish grind these parts. So I've run these three here through already on the finish grind and we'll just have the remaining ones to go and then what we'll do then is we'll run the first half of the arbors through again and what that will do it improves the surface finish so that's the first one off a newly dressed wheel. Second and third now there's a slight, it's, it's surface finish is increasing as the um, grits of the grinding wheel dull off a bit before they release. So that's the sort of finish that I'm after, is that one there. So we'll run them, we'll, we'll finish grind these. We're only talking about taking one thou off these to finish grind. And as we said we'll run the first half a dozen through again and that will give us an even surface finish on them all. And as we mentioned earlier, why we're doing it this way is due to the selection of grinding wheels, which I'll cover that at the end of the video. Okay, that one's come up good, so we're just going to continue with uh, the rest of them, and then we'll bring you back. That's beautiful. Really nice finish on that. Okay, so we've had a, a good grind on all our tapers. They've all blued up very well. So we verified, remember some time ago we made these taper gauges. So we've just re-verified that on the uh, Albrecht um, German chuck. And also the quill, uh, the spindle in the bridge port. So, yeah, no, they've come up well. Nice finish and blued up spot on. Okay, so we're just grinding the one inch section of our stub arbor. Now, at present, this is one and three tenths above size. So we've got, yeah, one and three tenths of a thou to come off it. And because it's, it's very difficult to get those measurements right off a direct reading of the cross slide, We've taken advantage of the compound slide being still at the angle for the R8 tapers. So we just wind in approximately, it's not exactly spot on, but approximately 5 thou in feed will bring our grinding wheel in directly to the job, about half a thou on the dial here. So that's um, close enough to get some pretty accurate results uh, when we're measuring and grinding the shaft.
Okay, that should be it. I'm pretty close now. We're about two in the vicinity of two to three tenths. So measure twice, cut once. Nice finish. There we have it. She's um bang on the money. One inch, spot on. So that's exactly where we need to be. This one's done. Okay, so I've just run all these through and done all these small ends on all these arbors. Um, I didn't film it because it's just parallel grinding and it's the same as what we've just done here, exactly the same process. One thing I will point out though, um, doing these, because we paid quite close attention to keeping to our a pretty tight roughing tolerance through all the machining stages, when we get to our finishing stages it just makes things a lot easier and as it turned out I thought I'd uh, I had roughed these down to a thou above finish size which turned out to be a thou above lower limit so I only had four tenths half a thou to take off these things so I was able to run, in, run them all through on pretty well the same setting to get them all um, to come out on size, so they've, um, they've all come out rather well. So we're smack well within our tolerance, 9496 to 900, well 949 to 9496. So we're looking good there. That was a pretty easy one to stick to. So the next operation, what we're going to do now is we're going to do the parallel, the, all these short parallel sections on, on the two arbors for the face mills and this one here for the uh, boring here, we've got a short section to do there and then what we're going to do is we're going to grind, we're going to side wheel all the faces that need side wheeling so there'll be this one, the boring arbor, and the two face mill arbors will, um, will, will side wheel um, this area here. That'll make a nice true surface for the, uh, the tooling, the cutters to pull up onto. Okay, we're not going to have time to get into the, into the face grinding. There's a bit involved in that to get it right, so I think we'll cover that in the next video. But what we will do is have a have a quick look at some of these grinding wheels we've been using. Now, what we get here in Perth, Australia, is we're it's, we're limited. I'm basically limited to three wheels, bar going uh, on the overseas market. Um, over in the US, there's a fair bit more selection of wheels, and what the problem is is the diameter of the wheel, the three inch and four inch wheels. It's globally it seems to be a very limited selection what's available. So we've got a couple of wheels here, that's a saucer wheel, that's that's a type 12, 
and these are cup wheels, a type 11 cup wheel. Now I mainly got these are for the tool and cutter grinder. If I want to use them on the tool post grinder, which I'll, I'll make up some hubs. You know, I've just got to make some adapter hubs up to run these wheels. So, put those ones out of the equation. Now, what we have available here, basically is these three here. So we've got a silicon carbide, which is fine for grinding tungsten. It's or something very hard you could use that on on your tool post grinder, but only for small uh, uh, small amounts of grinding. Otherwise, what will happen? Because the the wheel is so hard, it will dull up quickly, and you'll once you your, your grit and grains dull up, and then and the the wheel is too hard for the material you're grinding, you start getting chatter marks in your work. So that's just for very small limited use I would use that for. Now the wheels I've had the most success with for a roughing wheel, now for a roughing wheel an open structure wheel is, is, would be as ideal. Now there's a lot of um, specialised open structure wheels, I've had a couple of comments in the past people recommend types of wheels and I've looked them up and they're just not available in, in the 4 inch and the 3 inch range. Once you're 7 inch and above you get a wide range of, um, because obviously they're a lot more common wheel. Now where I've had success, this wheel here, just an ordinary aluminium oxide, it's an A60 so it's a 60 grit. Now these are just for use on a small like offhand grinder but um, I've had good results. I'm getting good results using this as a roughing wheel. Now, once you dress the wheel, what I've found using or well, on, on the jobs that we've been doing, after you've used the wheel a few times, you do get quite a good surface finish. But you get to a point where you've got to pull up and dress the wheel again before the wheel is just too blunt to cut because the, the, the grits aren't releasing properly because the wheel is actually too hard a wheel for what we're grinding and yeah, dress the wheel otherwise you're going to get chatter marks in your part now the same goes here there's another aluminium oxide wheel this is a tool room wheel this I have very good results with but only for a, a very short limited span before I have to stop and redress the wheel so when I do dress the wheel on a new cut, as what I've worked out with the parts that we've been grinding, the surface finish drops off with a freshly dressed wheel. So that's why we did on some of the areas run them through again, just the first uh, few grinds. Um, and that smoothed them out and that gave us a nice even result. So this is a 9A60J. But once again, the J is quite a, I'd like to go a softer uh, bond on this, and I think we get better results. But like I say, it's not available over here. This is, this is it. Now, the three inch wheels, um, a few episodes back when I was using the, the tool post grinder, I was using the three inch wheels. Now, I'm not getting anywhere near the same results and quality of grind as I am with the 4 inch wheel, so definitely the 4 inch wheels are, are far superior. So we'll get those out of the equation. Now the wheels that I do want to try, these are from, that's one, that's one of my old ones. These have come in from a viewer overseas, Rob, thanks. Now this is a 32, uh, 32A, it's a Norton, 32A60 K8VG. Now what I want to do is I want to try and track these down in the 4 inch uh, diameter wheel and I think I would get really good results out of one of those. This one here, a 38A, well that's, that's a 38A100, it's a very fine wheel but the 38A is a very similar structure wheel to our aluminium oxide wheel that we're using here. 
So I've got a bit more digging to do, um, trying to find suppliers. Uh, probably, like I said, I'm going to have to head towards the US to see what I can track down there. The major Australian supplier of Norton, they're pretty hard to deal with. You've, I think you may have to go through another tool shop to be able to deal with them, which there is, I have a local tool shop down the road, which uh, been going there for years, so I might go through them and they can go through the Norton supplier here in Australia, which I believe is the same supplier in the US. So that's my next avenue. But as I said, I got postponed with the shed with the concrete build, and then I've had uh, eye surgery, planned eye surgery, so that's really slowed things down in here. So in a nutshell, that's where we're at at the moment, is to get the best we can performance-wise out of these two wheels here, which we've proved we can do that. It was just a matter of finding how long we can grind with each wheel before they need redressing. And it's just a lot of trial and error. As Like I said before, there's just nowhere near the selection for these small wheels available that there is on big wheels. I looked up some wheels from uh, Do More, and uh, they have a small selection, but I had trouble finding the summary of their the grinding wheel markings of these of their wheels. So I've got all my old apprentice notes here, and, and this, this stuff is gold. So it's got all the wheels, uh, how they break down. So that's use the, the wheel chart as a guideline to what you're grinding and what I've found if I had a, a softer wheel which I can't get I think I'd have a lot more consistent results so I wouldn't have to keep going over the first initial parts again but um, now we got there in the end it's quite an unusual job that I've done on with the tool and cutter grinder being so many repetitious parts but it's, it's been a good um, grounding to w really work these wheels out, you know, grinding the same parts all of the time. So I think we've had quite a good success there. And once we get some more wheels, uh, we will endeavour to try them out as well, as we've got a, a heap of other tooling to make up, a lot of other grinding. So now, as I said before, the Grinding the faces, um, there's a lot involved in that. It's not just plunging in with a grinding wheel blindly like that. There's a lot involved getting your crisscross pattern right. So we're going to cover that one in the next video, how, how we get that. There's, there's a couple of methods to do that. So it would make this video too long if I did that. So anyway, take care. Um, we'll hopefully catch you all in the next video and we'll do some, we'll show you how to grind these faces. Cheers.